Smarties, last week we talked about why learners lie. Today, we're going to talk about what to do if your learner is lying. If you are interested in educational therapy for you or your learner, you can sign up for a phone call at my practice, myedtherapist.com, where we specialize in learners who are kindergarten all the way through adults doing reading, writing, math, executive functioning, all the things. Or you can sign up for a phone call with Rachel's practice, capedtherapy.com. That's K-A-P-P, edtherapy.com. Rachel's practice specializes in all things executive functioning and ADHD. So let's dig in. You want to learn faster, but sometimes working harder is just not the answer. You have to learn smarter. The Educational Therapy Podcast. I'm Stephanie Pitts. And I'm Rachel Cap. And today we're talking about what to do with learners who lie. So if you didn't listen, in episode 172, we talk about why learners lie. You know, scroll back a couple, we'll link it in our show notes, but talking about the situations that come up and why we should look deeper. Now we're going to talk about what to do. So let's dig right into it. The first thing to do is to get ahead of the lying. Look, I think we mentioned this in 172, lying is developmentally appropriate. So lying is developmentally appropriate, but the truth of the matter is we want to get ahead of lying becoming habitual. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really important how we respond when kids are truth-telling so that they don't become liars and they don't avoid in the future. Because that's really what lying is about, is they're avoiding the truth, avoiding reality, avoiding how they actually work and how they actually function. And so we really want to be mindful of how we're responding when they are younger so that it feels safe when they are older. 100%. Remembering to also have some compassion. When you're looking deeper into why this is happening, have some compassion about what the outcome needs to be. Does it really need to be an A, let's say, if we're talking about grades, is a B okay? I mean, in my opinion, absolutely. So having some compassion and knowing the why and helping them feel better is going to be extremely helpful for everybody. The third thing is don't take it personally. Hopefully, if you've listened to 172, we've given you a lot to think about in terms of why learners will avoid and lie and not be accurate reporters of their day. They're trying to preserve Mm -hmm. themselves, and they're also trying to avoid conflict. Yeah, Is this the right way to avoid conflict? No, because as we all know, the lying becomes bigger than the lie. Yeah. But trying not to take it personally. I actually have a client who will be welcoming onto the podcast at some point, and her parents are the best at not taking it personally because she'll literally say, I'm lying to myself too. Mm. And that was like a huge learning moment for me. You know, we tend to think kids are conscientious. Consciously making this choice. And she wasn't. Yeah. So it was really helpful for all of us. And her parents were really a safe place for her to land. They really understand her. Which is amazing. Yes. The next thing is verify, verify, verify. This is something that we both do a lot in our practices. There is just an expectation that if there has been any lying in the past, we verify. It's not taking it personally. It's not, I don't believe you or any of that. Let's just take a look. Let's just take a look. Exactly. And make sure that it's what it's supposed to be because sometimes it's intentional and sometimes it's not. If it is unintentional, then helping them verify that they did it correctly or just double checking. And now I'm not talking about double checking homework for correctness if Mm -hmm. the teacher needs to know. That's for a child that doesn't understand the material. If you have a child who tends to miss directions, this is an example of verify when there's multi-step directions, each part of the project or each part of the homework assignment are actually done. What's a very common one? The backside of a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. So often kids forget to turn it over. The way I sort of think of verify, 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 it doesn't even have anything to do 
with the quality of completion. I would say the quantity. Correct. But also, did they turn it in? Yeah. Simple baseline. Did they turn in the correct assignment for the correct mailbox online or Dropbox online? Yeah. Like it can be really simple depending on what your kid needs, what they've avoided the truth about in the past. It just sort of depends on each individual learner, but it's not a matter of constantly making them feel like they're liars, but working with them to help them understand that they need to become verifiers of their own truth too. Verifiers of their own truth. And reality. Helping them come to terms, helping them understand, helping them have a system. Yeah. Accept who they are. Yeah. You can't be good at everything. So no, there's things that I know that's not my jam. Right. It's okay. And I take full responsibility when it's not my jam. So this was something that I think you've really taught me because this is the one thing I honestly can take personally with my clients. And I have to step back, step away, take a minute because frankly, it hurts my feelings. Yeah. I understand when this happens, but coming together to identify the shared problem and then agree upon the consequences prior. So we talk about this with Dr. Stacey Haynes in episode 153 when we're talking about the plan B conversation. She talks with us about shifting the conversation from the concerning behavior, which in this case would be the lying, to the unsolved problem. And she talks a lot about how empathy plays a role in that shift. If you haven't listened to that episode, we went ahead and linked that for you in the show notes because that, I think, was really helpful in terms of reframing Yeah, the things that are happening that everybody would like to have stop because parents would like the lying to stop and learners would like the reactivity to be mitigated, shall we say. Fair enough. So the next thing is increased communication with everyone involved. Yep. That includes the school, other providers, teachers, babysitters. I mean, it's like as simple as, you know, the portal is reporting one thing, but they're like, no, no, no. My teacher told me that it's not going to be due for three days. Mm, Go ahead and send a confirmation email on that. Yeah. Let's just make sure. Just double check. And like I've said before, I've had learners who have turned it in blank. Oh yeah. And so if you know, you have a learner who will just turn it in so that it looks like it's done, even though nothing has actually been turned in. The final thing that you can do when lying has become a contentious issue in your household Mm -hmm. is outsource. Outsource that part of the work, outsource that part of the parenting conversation. We do that all the time. That's the role We serve at CAP Educational Therapy Group and at Maya Therapist, especially with older learners who are very much wanting independence and parents not feeling comfortable enough to allow that independence because they're not showing signs that they're ready for that kind of autonomy. So it's what I always tell parents when we talk during that discovery call, which you can sign up for at www.capedtherapy or www.myatherapist.com. Both of those are dot coms, Mm -hmm. which is that the beautiful and maybe intended byproduct of good intervention from our practices is that family and home life improves. Yeah. You know, I would love to hear from you guys if there's something that has worked in your family. And if there has, and we haven't talked about something, email us because we'd love to have you come on the podcast. Everyone's story helps somebody else out there. 100%. You can email us at Rachel and Steph at LearnSmarterPodcast.com. You don't have to use your name if you come on the podcast or anything like that. So surprise, a lot of the names have been changed to protect people. Exactly. (laughs) So anyway, hope this has been helpful. We know a lot of people are struggling with this. So let's continue the conversation. And our teams have talked to us about this. Yeah. They were the ones that inspired this episode. So thank you, CapEd Therapy team and Maya Therapist team. Yeah, definitely. Have a great week, Smarties. Have a great week.